Today I'm going to be taking a look at NTFS file compression in Windows. So file system level compression lets you take files that are compressible, compress them transparently, and store them so they take less space on the disk. And if implemented well, this will use less disk space and increase performance because the CPU can compress and decompress files faster than the disk could normally read and write the uncompressed file. But this really depends on the implementation. And I haven't seen too much data uh, you know, exactly how well the NTFS compression implementation works. I've seen a lot of people say, well, the performance is worse, that's why I don't use it on high performance stuff, but no specific numbers and not much testing. So I've done quite a bit of testing here, and I'm gonna report back and show you what I found and kind of what my process was doing all this testing. Now, one thing I will say is I came from the mindset of using ZFS and BTRFS quite a bit. And both of those file systems support compression in a similar way to NTFS, where it's transparent to the user or program, but I'd say they do it quite well. And most users and administrators would say just basically always leave compression on with those systems, as it basically only helps performance, and at least with ZFS and BTRFS, it will turn off compression for files that are incompressible. So it looks at a chunk of the file and says, hey, I can't compress this, so I'm just gonna skip it, saving you a little bit of CPU time. So I wanted to take a look at NTFS to see if these rules of you should probably always leave it on or what type of files it would make sense to compress versus it wouldn't make sense to compress in NTFS. So the first thing I started to do was just a simple file copy of a large hard drive image from an internal drive in a slow older laptop to an external SSD. This shouldn't be disk limited as it's two SSDs over USB 3 and I was throwing an older AMD A6 based laptop at this because I thought the slower speed would make sure there's a CPU bottleneck if there is one. And this test took roughly 25 minutes without compression enabled and when I copied to the external drive that had compression enabled, the time went up to like over three hours. So that was an interesting test and it averaged at about 15 to 20 megabytes per second quite poor speeds and I saw an increase in CPU usage likely due to it. And looking at the CPU usage, it seemed to be single thread limited too. At this point, I decided I need to do a little bit more testing because it doesn't look like it's as easy as just leave compression on all the time. I did a little bit of reading on some tech blogs on the Microsoft site of people going into how it works under the hood. I'm not an expert in file system design and how exactly it works but they did advise against using really large files like I was using here, so that probably wasn't the best test. And they also showed some other caveats of how it compresses the files, can increase the amount of fragmentation, which in my case with SSDs wasn't likely an issue, but with hard drives, increased fragmentation likely won't help with performance. I also got the super quick summary of how it does NTFS compression under the hood. So it'll take eight clusters, by default 4K um, typically, and then it'll put those together. So it'll take this 32 kilobyte chunk, compress it, and then store it on disk on less clusters if it's possible to compress it into less clusters. Compression algorithm wise, NTFS uses algorithms based off LZ77, which is similar to what something like ZIP uses. Windows 10 also added some newer compression algorithms, though I'm unsure of how to view under the hood what algorithm is currently being used and if there's a switch to use. I now decided to run a better file copy test that would remove the CPU bottleneck and have multiple smaller files to remove the single large file limitation. In this case, I was using my desktop, which had a 5950X, which should remove the CPU bottleneck and be basically one of the fastest desktop CPUs you can buy on the market today. And I was also using a folder of VM images. It was a total of 81.3 gigabytes and NTFS was able to compress it to 44.9 gigabytes with the compression enabled. I was also running the latest version of Windows 10 that you can get publicly at this time. I was copying it from a RAID array of SATA SSDs to a single SATA SSD, and the no compression speed was 421 megabytes per second. Copying it from a compressed folder to an uncompressed folder from the same drives was copying at 350 megabytes per second. The uncompressed one was fully disk limited, but the one copying from the compressed volume to the uncompressed volume was partially disk limited sometimes and not at the other. I wasn't able to test exactly if it was being disk limited when it was copying a very compressible part of the file or a not very compressible part of the file. The next test was copying it from a folder that wasn't compressed to a folder that was compressed. This was much slower at an average of 106 megabytes per second, 
and then the last test was copying it from one compressed folder to another compressed folder, and that ran at 88 megabytes per second, a little bit slower than the one. So taking a look at this, it seems like read speeds are okay in this use case, a little bit lower, but still faster than like a hard drive speed would be, but the write speeds are pretty darn bad. Another weird thing I noticed is the Windows file copy dialog when copying on compressed drives is just weird, and it shows a lot of weird bumpies and is nowhere near consistent. And it kind of goes between for me like 500 megabytes per second and like 20. I'm not sure if this is a bug or the actual copying speeds because task manager seems to show a much more consistent rate. Maybe it's something to do with caching, but I wish they'd find a way to like show the actual speed in the copy dialog if that was possible. The next thing I wanted to take a look at with performance is how a more real world use case would look. And in this case, games. So I decided to take my same desktop with the 5950X, and in this case, a four hard drive RAID 0 that I used to store my games on, and set my Steam folder to be compressed. And now that my Steam game library folder is compressed, I save a bit of space. I've done a little bit of testing in the past, and typically games give me a saving of anywhere from 10 to 40% of space savings. I first tried downloading some new games, which was definitely a little bit slower, but not a huge problem. Games are still able to download in a couple hundred megabit per second range easily, and I wouldn't say it's a major issue for my game download times. But when launching a game, I noticed it was actually quite a bit slower. I spent a lot of time on loading screens I wasn't used to, saw a lot of parts of loading screens that I'm not normally used to seeing, and also in games where textures pop in slowly, like Borderlands 3 in my testing, it was noticeably slower, and I spent a lot of time in the slowish, and I got some weird hiccups. From the looks of it, NTFS comp and compression in modern games just don't seem to go together, and the performance hits too big. You could use it on older games fine that don't need as much disk I.O. performance, but by the time you're doing that, the space savings I'd say just isn't worth it, because those games are pretty small anyways. I'd stay away from using NTFS compression on games due to the performance hit. Another thing I wanted to take a look at was the space saving component of NTFS compression. So this really depends on exactly your file, and because it is easy to enable it and just test it for yourself, I'd say test your files and see how well it does. A lot of files these days are already compressed, even if it doesn't seem like they are. So things like a Microsoft Word doc is really a zip file with XML files in it. That's not gonna compress anymore with NTFS compression as it's already compressed. But I took a giant assortment of the type of files I typically keep on my NAS, and on an 800 gigabyte virtual disk, I had 156 gigs free with no compression with my file set. I had 342 gigs free on my compressed data set, and I also tried NTFS deduplication. Deduplication is a feature that Microsoft brought out in Windows Server 2012 to NTFS and REFS, and in components to compression where it would take eight clusters and try to put them together, deduplication takes files and tries to look for similar ones and delete the duplicated chunks on the disk. I've used this a good amount in work when I work with Windows Server, so I wanted to try it out here and it had the best space savings. Also, I haven't done this much performance testing on it here and unfortunately there's no easy way to use it in Windows 10 supported by Microsoft but my experiences with performance using it at work on work hardware for like VMs and stuff has been quite good. So I'd say deduplication seems to be the best of space savings and still pretty good performance. And I wish they'd bring it to Windows 10 on the desktop. Another use case I wanted to take a look at was having a very small boot drive. So in this case, I made a virtual machine with a 32 gigabyte boot volume and installed a lot of common programs like Steam, Discord, Chrome, Firefox, and other little programs. And on the system, the system with compression had 6.89 gigabytes free, and the system without compression had 6.32. So a little bit of space savings here, but not that much. And part of this is to do by NTFS compression can't compress most of the OS files, so actually taking up quite a bit of space here. Only some of the program files. There actually is an easy way to compress the OS files of the compact.exe, and that actually saved about three gigs on both systems. So if you're in a system where you're heavily disk space limited, I'd say use the compact.exe program to compress all your OS files. But if you're in a pinch, NTFS compression can be reasonable. It will hurt performance, but if it's the ability to install a program you want or not, I'd say give it a shot if you don't really have much else to try. So that was most of my testing with NTFS compression on Windows.
Unfortunately, there's no great use I can find for it just because the performance is quite poor. And even running off hard drive based systems, I noticed quite the performance hit in a lot of the applications I was running it on. And even not that great of a space savings for a lot of the type of files I store and use. In comparison to ZFS where the recommendation is just almost always use it, it seems to be only use it if it really makes sense here. Something like log files I think would make a lot of sense. You don't need very high IO and it's a very compressible file typically. But other than that, I'd say generally leave NTFS compression off and just let the files be stored as they are on disk. Thanks for watching this little look into NTFS compression and let me know if you have any other thoughts on NTFS compression down below in the comments. And thanks for watching.